Happy Thanksgiving and welcome Christ the King and to all who are gathering in your homes to watch this pre-recorded Thanksgiving Eve worship service. Earlier today, many of you have dropped off desserts, which we are sharing with Pillars, um, which is our homeless shelter here in the Fox Valley that we are sharing our desserts with this year. Thank you for sharing that sweetness from your homes to those who don't know where their next meal is coming from and also the dessert that they are enjoying. As we are gathered here tonight, you can see our altar is decorated with beautiful fine china and festive uh, decorations for Thanksgiving. This is a time that we welcome others into our homes. It's a sign of hospitality, a sign of welcome, and a sign of our sharing thanks for what God has given us, the people we can gather with. And so tonight, as we give thanks for all that God has blessed us with, Thanksgiving is about remembering what God has given us and how we can say thank you for those blessings throughout the year and in our day. As we begin our worship, one thing you may want to do is light a candle in your home to draw God's presence together or to focus on as we spend our time in worship. If you would like to light a candle, you can hit the pause and then start the worship back up once your candle is lit. Let's take a few moments now to prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Our service begins in God, the Holy Trinity, the three in one. Amen. Our call to worship. The world is filled with the glory of God and we say, Thank you. The hills and valleys are filled with color and we say, Thank you. The vines and trees are filled with fruit and we say, Thank you. Our tables are overflowing with food and we say, Thank you. Our life is filled with love of family and friends and we say, Thank you. We fill our homes and churches with our voices saying, Thank you. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O God. Amen. Amen. We take some time now for confession and forgiveness. Gracious Creator, you have given us so much. But too often we take those gifts for granted or as something to which we are entitled. You call us to live in caring community. But too often we place our wants and needs first with those of others a distant second. You call us to share your gifts with the world around us. But we are worried that there may not be enough, and our worrying gets in the way of our sharing. For all the times when we mistreat and misuse your gifts. For all the times we assume that we get what we have by ourselves. Forgive, forgive us, us and, and lead, lead us back to the path, to the path of, of wisdom. wisdom. God, is a gracious giver. God is, a grac is, grac grac is gracious in forgiveness. God calls us to new patterns and new life. We, we are, are a forgiven, forgiven people. people. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. We continue now with our prayer of the day. Let us share that, sharing that prayer together. We begin. Almighty, Almighty God, God your generous goodness comes to us new every day. By the work of your Spirit, lead us to acknowledge your goodness, give thanks for your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Psalm 95, verses 1 through 7. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come to the Lord's presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to the Lord with song and praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In the Lord's hands are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are God's. The sea is the Lord's, for God made it. And the dry land, which the Lord's hands have formed, O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For you are our God, and we are your people your shepherd, and the flocks under your care. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The reading of our Holy Gospel comes from St. Matthew, the sixth chapter, verse, verses 25 through 34. Jesus was teaching, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And can, you, can any of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, that they neither toil nor spin. Yet, I tell you, even Solomon in his glory was not clothed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will God not much more clothe you, you of little faith? Therefore, do not worry, saying, What will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? For it is the Gentiles who strive for these things, and indeed your heavenly Father knows that you need all of these things. But strive first for the kingdom of God and God's righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. This is the gospel of the Lord. Let us say thanks be to God. Thanks, thanks be to God. Thanksgiving is our time in which we give thanks to God. Traditionally, we think of it as a harvest and the celebration of the harvest of all that uh, we have produced. But as we think of it in the context of God, we think about what has God given us in the last year and how have we been blessed in thanksgiving for what God has given us. Our focus is on what God has given us and rather than on, on other things in life. I think of the harvest that's happened around our home. The harvest has been vegetables in our garden, flowers in our flower gardens, uh, Asian pears on our trees, as well as apples. But I think what we're really, really good at is harvesting weeds and leaves at this time of the year, which maybe we aren't so happy about. But to have weeds and to have uh, trees with leaves means that we have those things, and there are those things that we need to do in order to care for them. God gives us so much, 
There are challenges along the way, but there are also many wonderful things that we give thanks for. As I think about Christ the King, I think about the things that we have been blessed with here. Over 20 baptisms have happened this past year. I think about how projection has been part of our worship and live streaming on Sunday mornings and other worship services, even this service tonight. We give thanks for uh, many other uh, blessings that God has given us here at Christ the King. I think of now the new ministry of Ruby's Pantry where we share food with those who are hungry. And of course, many other ministries that we continue to do from Habitat for Humanity to uh, pillars and serving meals to, of course, our Chris Ed and many of our other learning places that we have for uh, our men and women and other people of our congregation and even guests. I also think of our book studies that we've shared on racial justice and learning about race. We've been challenged in so many ways, too, along the way. The pandemic, our protocols, and in many other ways of reaching out to one another and connecting has been a challenge for all of us. But by the grace of God, we are able to overcome, as I've shared many of the things that we give thanks to God for in this year. As I prepared for uh, tonight's message, there's, uh, you may see some donuts here on the table right before us. And as I grab one of these donuts that I might add are smelling really good right now and I'd like to eat one. Uh, we'll get to that a little bit later. But donuts for us have a message for us as we think about Thanksgiving. And it goes a little bit like this. As we grow, go through life, make this your goal. To focus on the donut, not on the whole. You see, oftentimes, when we go through life, we focus on what we don't have, or we put our focus on the whole, rather than what it is that we do have when we have a donut here in our hand. We have so much that we can give thanks for in our lives and in the ministry of this congregation and, and how we share that. We have so much, but unfortunately, we miss what's going on because we we get negative or we get focused on what we don't have or things that really aren't things. But we forget that we have a donut which we can enjoy and savor and give thanks to God that we have in our lives. So during this Thanksgiving time, it's important for us to remember how God blesses us. I remember um, a book that I once read by Stephen Covey Maybe many of you have read it too, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. There's a saying in there that goes like this, and you've heard this from me before. The main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. Now, it's important to keep our focus. But I heard it around 2002 when I was at a stewardship and evangelism conference for the ELCA in Denver, Colorado. And there was an up-and-coming pastor from Texas, Reverend Ernie Harnusa. I think I said that right. But anyway, it's been many years. And what he shared is what's important is to keep the main thing the main thing. And he wasn't talking about what Stephen Covey was talking about, but he was talking about our lives and our relationship with God. What is it we can give thanks for that God blesses us with today? How is it that we can look at the donut rather than the whole in life and give thanks to God at this time of thanksgiving? I hope that as you gather around tables this Thanksgiving time, whether it's on Thanksgiving Day or before or after, that you might be able to give thanks for what you have, what you've been blessed with, and to see how God gives you so much. As we think about our gospel today in Matthew, Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, I think what's important from those words that he is sharing is to remember what you have rather than what you don't have. And it is God who has us. And it is not to fear in life 
For if we have God, there is nothing to be fearful of. But oftentimes we might focus on that fear which Matthew was trying to bring out that Jesus was teaching there on the Sermon of the Mount. So I hope that we as a congregation and each of us as individuals and as we gather with our families that we might be able to give thanks for what we have and to say thank you for all that God blesses us with. Have a happy Thanksgiving and God bless you. With thanksgiving in our hearts, we pray to God for the church, for the world, and for all creation. Let us join our hearts in prayer. Holy God, we lift our hearts and live to you, who is the great restorer. Thank you for your continual grace that clothes us in all of life, life's situations. Gracious God, your mouth was filled with laughter as you sang creation into being. Thank you for the beauty of the lakes and rivers, forest and fields, day and night, and to every creature that fills the world. Loving God, you created us in your image to be very good. Continue to satisfy us throughout the day with your lavish abundance. Protect us with choosing pathways that lead to you rather than to greed and selfishness. Help us to see the open gate that leads to seeking your kingdom first in our lives rather than the ways of this world. Gracious God, you are the ancient of days. You sent prophets and psalmists who were longing to restore us to your side. Build up the church today that seems scattered and disjointed and at times unrepentant. Give us hearts filled with your unconditional love and understanding. Give us your love and eternal hope that your saving power is working in our lives and in this world. And use our words and deeds that they might glorify you and your kingdom and that we might lift up one another. Gracious God, you are the healer of every ill. We think of many who are sick in these days who are in the midst of treatments or need surgery or have a diagnosis and are waiting to get started. Take away fear and pain and the many things that keep us from focusing on you. We pray for the broken areas in our lives and in relationships. Restore the joy of life to all who are grieving and give your balm so that it may be slathered where healing is needed. 
Gracious God, give us gratitude in this season of thanksgiving to see your power at work in this world and in our lives and that your truth come out in the midst of, of unbelief. Gracious God, we say holy, holy, holy as we take a few moments now to share our prayers with you in the midst of our silence now. God of hope and strength, with thanksgiving in our hearts, we entrust to you all for whom we pray. Remain with us always, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. May we say amen, amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive now the benediction. May the peace of God enfold us, the love of Christ uphold us, and the wisdom of the Spirit control us. May we say amen. 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 Go in peace. Bring God's love to life. Thanks be to God. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs>